Well, hello there, everyone. It is Wednesday, January 26th of the year 2022. Hopefully this finds you doing well. I've had an extremely busy morning with several different things. I want to tell you about one of them. And hopefully you watched that in a video yesterday about Gary. It's an up and coming city, even though it's been around for, I don't know, hundred and some odd years. Anyway, once again, thank you, Michael Zuber, for introducing me to that market. Anyway, this is what's going on in Maskey's life. I am working on two burr strategies. Burr. <laughs> two burr strategies. And that burr, if you watched my swimming video the other day, I swam, what, 69.75 degrees? Well, guess what? Yesterday, I think it was something like this. Air temperature was 66 degrees. My pool was 67 degrees. And I did a quick swim in it. And... On the second lap, I could tell my legs and my arms and my torso were starting to numb up. <laughs> so I cut my swim workout short and got out of the pool and got in a warmer shower. So anyway, I'm working on two bar strategies. I figured I'd give you a quick update on them. Neither is guaranteed that they will happen. Well, actually one should happen. The second one, I think it will, but we shall see. And I'll tell you just a little bit about them. They're both located in the windy city of Chicago. Okay, I've done my due diligence on another market and I'm checking that city out. Yes, there's a lot of stuff going on in the city. That's not good. Uh, but yet for rental property, I think it'll be okay. Check back with me in a year or so and I'll update you. Okay, but two properties. Maskey likes to jump in with both feet. So he's had a dry run. No rental houses picked up in the entirety of 2021. One rental property was sold at the tail end last couple of days of 2021, but no new rental properties were picked up. Oil was added to, mineral rights acreage was added to. I'm now a mini Exxon, <laughs> that's a joke. Uh, I own a variety of mineral rights acreage and oil drilling investments. So anyway, back to Burr. Burr in Chicago, two houses. I bought both off of the MLS. Remember, there's no deals on the MLS. Right. I got two houses off the MLS. I do have a contact, boots on the ground, help me out. I made offers on both and got them both, I believe, under the asking price. I'm, I'm hesitating there because it started back in December. Now we're, it's a month, a month has gone by and I think I got both under market value. I don't think I paid asking price for either one. Well, I haven't paid yet. <laughs> but what is happening, I am paying cash for one house. Yeah, ouch. <laughs> I'm paying cash for it. And I'm getting it for, you ready? This isn't a $20,000 house. This isn't a $40,000 house. This isn't a $50,000 house. This isn't a $60,000 house. I am paying $64,000. Yep, 64 smackaroos. Paying cash for that. All right, it also means I need to pay closing costs. I haven't been given an estimate on closing costs yet, but I'll guess they'll be around, let's just say $1,500, based on past experience when I paid cash for three different houses. I think it was $1,200 to $1,500, it all depends. It's a new market for me, so fees may be more than my other markets, we'll see. So I'm paying cash for one, but that's continued on the uh, current tenant getting out of the house by the end of this month, so. If they don't get out by the end of the month, that will delay me purchasing it. Once they get out, then we'll do another walkthrough and inspection, make sure there's no other new damage. And then we can go ahead and line up closing. So it'll be sometime in February, hopefully. With the other house, I am getting that one for $70,000. I am not paying cash for that. I cannot swing paying cash for two houses simultaneously. But I am working on a mortgage through another lender. It's a non-QM lender. And this is the one that has a question mark by it still. Um, I was told yesterday, I think, or the day before, we're good to go. They're going to give me kind of what I would call a burr loan. It's a They call it like a bridge loan, a fix and flip type loan. They I'll give you the basic rundown of it, what they'll do. It, whatever the buy price is, and in my case $70,000, you pay 10% down. So that would be $7,000. You put 10% down and they will give you a mortgage in for, they will buy that house for you then. It's 70 grand, you put 10% down, they pay 63,000. 
then you pr provide them with a scope of work of the work that needs to be done. My scope of work came out to roughly $13,500 worth of work that needs to be done. So I provided that to them. I think they rounded it to just down to just $13,000. Um, so that may, means, uh, means the total loan amount it's sixty-three thousand. You add thirteen to it, so seventy-three, seventy-six thousand dollars should be the loan amount if they will do this for me. Okay, but the what they would do is they buy the house. I then start doing repairs, and I think I get three draw checks. I do some repairs, document what's been done, maybe send them pictures. Like say it needs new floors. Maybe I take pictures of the new floors being down, send it to them. This is how much I spent. They then reimburse me for. I don't know the full price or the third of the 13,000. I think it's the third, it might be two times we do it. And I continue the renovations, send it to them, they reimburse me, okay? It's kind of like a hard money loan. I don't know my actual interest rate. It could be between seven and 9%, um, hard money loan. But once I get the rehab completed, I can go ahead and try to get a tenant in place. And at that time, I think I can even do it before I get the tenant in place. As soon as the rehab's done, I can let them know if I do not want to do a cashback refinance, like maybe I just want to put a mortgage on it for that, whatever the number I said, $76,000. Or, um, or maybe I want to do $70,000. I'll run the numbers and figure out how much positive cash flow I'm going to get. If I've got a mortgage for $76,000, if it was an ideal situation, that means I got this house completely free. We'd have to pay for it, but we'd get all the money back, right? Right. That's what would happen. Um, kind of, sort of. Yes, that's what would happen. But I may decide, me being me, I'm not a spring chicken, I'm not 20 years old, I might want more cash flow, so maybe I will end up putting, as an example, $20,000 in the deal and get a mortgage for somewhere in the 50s, or maybe I'll put $30,000 in the deal. You know, whatever it may be, if the cash flow isn't enough, because I think if I got the full mortgage, my cash flow would be in the high 300s, I think, which is pretty good. But Maskey may want to get more cash flow, be willing to leave a little cash in the deal. So that's the game plan. However, this morning, I sent an email to the lender and he called me, or did I call him, one way or the other, and he said he found something out that the company, they do mortgages in that city, Illinois, and state, Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, but they don't do as many uh, bridge type loans, fix and flips unless it's somebody who's an experienced flipper, an experienced burr person. I have experience. I did the burr strategy in Birmingham, Alabama. Did it from 600 miles away, it was a successful burr. I've done work on two properties in Virginia where I did cashback refinances. So I got that experience. I, you know, I was there, I helped do that work. I supervised the work. And I did successful cashback refinances because they both appraised at a higher price. But I don't have what's considered the expert. I'm not an expert flipper. I'm not an expert burr. So he sent me a spreadsheet to fill out and basically asked if I could list all my properties in chronological order, more or less, from present day on back to when I got my first one and kind of put in there what I bought, what I bought it for, what I did with it. Am I holding it? Did I refinance it? Did I sell it? Whatever. So I... Spent the morning. I am not the best organized person at times, so I spent the morning pulling up what were the exact dates of all my properties, because in the year 2020, I bought 14. In the year 2019, I bought whatever I bought, six or seven, and so on. So I had to pull up dates. What did I buy them for? I track my net worth. I know what I owe on mortgages. I know what they're valued at, but I had to find the paperwork to see what I bought them for. So it took me a little while, okay? So that's an update on that. As of yet, I'm fairly certain I'll be buying the one house for cash as long as that tenant gets out and they didn't destroy the house even worse than what it is. I'll be buying that. Oh, and on that one, if I pay once I pay cash for it, the game plan is same lender. I will pay cash for it. I will do the rehab. Then I will contact them, get an appraisal done, and hopefully put a 30-year mortgage on the property. That way... It should. I bought it for what I say, sixty-four thousand. I think that one, twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars, also to rehab it somewhere in there. So sixty-four, seventy-four, seventy-six, seventy-seven, seventy-eight thousand, whatever it may be. It should appraise both houses when they're rehab. Should appraise 
low end 100,000, high end 125. That's the guess as to the range, 100 to 125. Um, the lender will give me a mortgage, I think 75% value uh, based on the appraisal. So appraised at $100,000, they will give me a mortgage for 75,000 or appraises for 125, they'll give me a higher mortgage. So again, with that house, I'll need to decide once I know what's what, what the exact numbers are. Um, do I want to get a mortgage and get cash back? Because that's always a possibility. Get a couple thousand dollars cash back or 10000 back. That's a possibility. Or do I want to get a mortgage for the exact amount of money I put in? So I could say it's a free house. Or do I, again, with this one, want to leave, leave a little bit of money in the deal? I am at a stage of my life, I'm living off my investments. So I do want maximum cash flow. So if I leave ten or $20,000 in it, that's just like I put a down payment down. Um, and if it's still, and then if that makes a positive cash flow even better, like $400, $500 perhaps, that might be the way I do it. I do have access to cash. So I'm willing, I think, to leave a little bit of cash in the deal. Okay, not that I can do this forever because <laughs> I'll eventually run out of cash. But I'm looking for, I'm looking to maximize cash flow. Okay, and that's what I'm doing. Just a side note, and I'll wrap this up. I'm doing that with my oil drilling and my mineral rights acreage. As I think I referenced, I could jokingly say I'm a mini Exxon. I'm trying to get a little, my fingers in different pies, shall we say, in the oil, in the mineral rights business. So I have mineral rights acreage and I have oil drilling. And I have a webinar to watch this afternoon. I forgot about that. The uh, oil drilling company, they're going to be on location at their rig. So they're going to do a live webinar from the rig. So that'll be fun to watch. And one of these days, I'm going to get out there to Texas and Oklahoma. That's where my investments are. Take a look at them in person. So anyway, enough's enough. It's lunchtime, soup and salad for lunch. That time, the missus will be home. She's in an educational facility uh, learning. So she's been doing that. She'll do that 20 hours a week now for the next four or five months. So good for her. And Maskey loves education. So... Since Maskey's financially independent, and if I get tired of dilly-dallying around, making videos, kayaking, maybe get a boat boating, swimming every day, maybe I'll sign up for some class because <laughs> I love I love free education. So we'll see. All right, y'all take care. Stay safe. Tell Michael Zuber if you talk to him or text him that Maskey salutes him. Even though his parents were military, he wasn't, but I salute Michael Zuber because he introduced me to the real estate market where I'm at. That has led to me dipping my toes into another real estate market in the Windy City of Chicago. So thank you, Michael Zuber. All right, Maskey is signing out.